So what you just heard were the dulcet tones of the Power Gig Rise of the Six String Guitar. It was a companion guitar to a video game released a couple years ago back when uh, Rock Band and Guitar Hero were popular. And um, whatever company that made this decided that well, those cheap plastic guitar controller things weren't really what people wanted. What they wanted was a sort of miniature guitar with, well, made out of plastic and a plastic neck and um, really cheap frets. Honestly, this thing is just kind of miserable to play. Um, the frets are about an eighth of an inch or more off the plastic fretboard. Um, it's constantly going out of tune. In fact, in the video that you heard earlier, it was going out of tune as I played it and that only took about five minutes. Um, it also has this really weird mute system, which you push this little button, that thing pops up, and then you can't really play it um, effectively. Um, it's really just kind of a piece of shit. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why do I have it? Well, I picked it up for 40 bucks on Amazon, I thought it might be a fun little toy, but more importantly, I've been looking for a source for hexaphonic pickup as of late, and when the video game company that made this needed a way to sense if players are playing the correct strings and the correct frets, they installed a hex pickup, similar to what you see in a guitar synthesizer. I'm more interested in it for individual string processing, panning, hex fuzz, things like that, but I'm going to see if I can pull that pickup out of there and actually use it for something interesting and probably throw the rest of this piece of shit plastic away. So I've already taken most of the screws out of this thing. They're all torque screws. Um, I think it's the most torque screws I've ever seen in a singular product. Um, but let's pop the back and see what it looks like. So I was actually expecting this thing to be kind of a mess on the inside, but it's pretty well laid out. Um, I was expecting it to all be sort of a, a singular PCB with everything soldered to it, but it actually uses individual components sort of spread out over the entire thing. This is the back of the pickup that we're looking at, um, and it does have, if I bring the camera down, you can sort of see it does have individual leads coming out of it for each pole which is, makes our job a lot easier. I'm also going to guess that this wire here is carrying the single coil part of the pickup so you can actually play it through a regular guitar amp out of this jack. Got two reasonably good uh, switchable... I guess they're not switchable, they'd be um, uh, momentary switch pots. Not sure what those values are. Um, if they're standard guitar resistance, that'd be interesting. Uh, battery compartment, this is for the Xbox 360's headset connector proprietary bullshit that uh, nobody really liked. And then we have our main circuit board up here. And the pickup actually connects with this connector here. And there are six leads coming out of that as well. So that is actually pretty interesting. It'll make this disassembly a lot easier. However, uh, while it's nice that the neck is actually metal reinforced instead of just being a thick hunk of plastic, the pickup is located underneath that reinforcement, so we're going to have to take that off. And I think that'll mean taking the bridge off the front as well. So that's going to be another task. So here's some additional information I found while researching the guitar in the game. It was originally released for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 in October of 2010, a full three years after the first Rock Band game and five years after Guitar Hero, just in time for people to start losing interest in the genre. Despite being late to the game, the fact that it used a real guitar as the controller attracted endorsements from artists like Eric Clapton and Dave Matthews, who had originally shied away from licensing their songs for games such as these because of their simplicity. However, even though the package controller resembles a guitar, the most simple game mode plays almost exactly like Guitar Hero, and a Guitar Hero controller can even be used to play the game. The guitar controller itself is two-thirds the size of a real one, with a scale length of roughly 16 inches. 
It uses a system of segmented frets in conjunction with the hex pickup and dampener to sense which strings and frets are being played. But while this system will detect every note being played below the 12th fret, the game itself is only designed to use two note intervals at most with a damper engaged. As a result, the main gameplay control method is almost identical to Guitar Hero, just with strings instead of buttons, and there is no advantage to playing the controller like a real guitar. In fact, playing the game with the muting bar disengaged will actually cause false triggering, and playing more than one string in a chord with the damper engaged could still potentially be read as six separate triggers. The game did ship with a feature called the Power Chord Mode, which was supposed to take advantage of the availability of extra strings to add some challenge. However, because of the triggering issues, the power chord mode was eventually patched out of the game because of how inaccurate it was, leaving players stuck in just the one string mode. It retailed on launch for $179. So here's just a look at some of the usable parts you can get out of this thing. Um, over here is the hex pickup itself. We've got a single coil pickup here, and then each individual pull piece on the bottom. Uh, this is after taking the sheet metal backer off. Um, not sure if I can actually get that out of the plastic, but I may not to. It seems to be set up pretty much just as a PAF sort of form factor, so it should fit into a regular guitar. I am worried a little bit about the height, though. Uh, it's quite tall, and with all these leads coming out of the back, it might make it getting into an actual guitar a little bit more difficult, but uh, we'll see about that. I might be able to, well, possibly solder something a bit more flexible in. Truth be told, there's a lot of epoxy there that would be, be, would be preventing that from happening, but we'll see. Here are some close-up shots of the pickup I took after disassembly. The regular pickup and hex pickup assemblies come out as two separate units. Each hex pickup has a single coil and its own small permanent magnet mounted to a PCB, and the single coil pickup is completely shielded from the hex pickups and other circuitry of the guitar controller. The single coil is wound to approximately 9.93k, and the hex ones are wound to approximately 842 ohms. Ultimately, I had to modify both the pickup housing and the pickguard of my guitar in order to fit it into my test guitar. The pickup housing is too tall to give enough space for the seven pickup wires to run underneath when mounted in the guitar, and the housing itself is larger than a standard humbucker. With some metalworking prowess, you could probably fabricate a mounting plate for the two pickup assemblies to sit on without the plastic housing. For the wiring, I used 15 conductor cables with DB15 connectors to run each string signal separately to a breakout box. Each signal is then routed to its own quarter inch TRS jack. From there, each string can be routed to its own amp, mixer input, or recording interface input for processing. So, what exactly can you do with something like this? Well, you can... Pan each string separately, creating a wide stereo spread when strumming or finger picking. <laughs> Apply a fuzz or distortion effect to each individual string, creating hex fuzz. This unique effect allows you to play complex, distorted chords with less of the harmonic intermodulation between the notes that you would get from a single pickup. Pitch the lowest four strings up an octave, apply a slight delay or course for the top two, mix the output back with the original signals and create a pseudo-electric 12-string effect. Or, 
use it to control a guitar synthesizer and synth edit based on the Roland GR300. Obviously, individual processing like this opens up a whole new range of sonic possibilities for the guitar. You can even edit out bum notes that you play in each individual track, which is a godsend for me since I'm not really the best player to begin with. So while the game itself is apparently pretty bad, and the guitar controller that you get with it barely functions in its intended purpose, you can still get some sort of use out of it. In fact, given how badly the game flopped is kind of a silver lining, as you can now get the controllers for dirt cheap instead of their original fairly high retail price. That's all for this video. Hopefully it's managed to spark your imagination and maybe do some modification or hexaphonic processing to your own guitar. It's a really shame about the power gig controller though. Maybe that can be repurposed for something. Till next time. Or... I didn't like that last one.